about to give God a worship With the fruit of our lips Come on somebody worship your mighty God on today God we love you God we thank you and we appreciate you This little simple song just says this Great and mighty is our God 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 Come on, help me sing it, great and mighty Great and mighty is our God Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Let all God's people sing how mighty is our God. God, we come 
right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking that you would look down upon us as a people, God. Heal our nation, oh God. Heal our hearts, oh God. Whatever it is that we're battling with, sickness, disease, anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, oh God. We come asking that you would heal us. God, we thank you for it. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we know that if it had not been for you on our side, God, where would we be? just want to magnify your name on today, God. We love you, oh God. We bless your name. Oh God, we thank you. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Come on, somebody just simply say, Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. to be here in his presence. How many of y'all love God? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore him. Just wanted to tell
girl singing it, but somewhere in your heart, sing to God oh, that you love. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, we love you, God. Lord, I love you more than anything. One more time. Lord, I love you more than anything. From the top, from the top. to do for us in our lives, we can't help but just have an authentic worship life. That if God doesn't do another thing for us, he's already done enough. So I don't know about you, but can I just get a hallelujah, a hand clap of praise this morning about what God is doing. This is a Sabbath day, and we should be praising him with everything we got. Praise be to God. I don't know about you, but I know that my God has supplied my every need. My God has allowed me to go through the valley of the shadow of death and not to fear any evil. Because the word says that he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. So I'm thankful for the rod. I'm thankful for the staff. I'm thankful for Jesus because he is the rod. He is the staff. He is the word. Praise be to God. And you know, it says in the word of God that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The least seed that, that if you put some seeds before you, you probably wouldn't pick that seed because it's not the prettiest seed. It's not the biggest seed. It's the least seed amongst all the seeds that we know. But then when you take that least seed, that unexpected seed, and you sow it in the ground, that seed will grow and it'll become a big tree. And that tree will be able to cover so much the birds, the word of God says, will be able to perch in there. In other words, it's going to be able to hold so much. So brothers and sisters, I, I love the mustard seed on Saturdays. I don't know about you all, but I, I love the mustard seed on Saturdays where we're focusing on the kingdom of heaven. 
and his righteousness and all things will be added unto us. So you, you know how we do it. Let us all stand and let us, let us get ready to go into the word. But I'm going to pray this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, just the praise, worship, peace of our service, Lord. We worship you because of who you are, not what you can do for us. Lord, we thank you for breathing life into us, Lord, and, and redeeming us from the brokenness, the things that have tried to make us hopeless. Lord, we, we thank you for infusing into us your spirit and creating in us a clean spirit, renewing us every day. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for giving us understanding around your word helping us to, to learn more about you. It's about intimacy. It's about a personal relationship. And we're so thankful this morning, Lord, that you have showed us what it is to have what is written in the book of James, that, that pure religion, which is to have a heart of service, serving the widow and children, and to remain unspotted by the world. In other words, Lord, you have showed us not to let anyone or anything get between us and you. Lord, thank you on this day. Now speak to us and speak through us as the word which goes forth will penetrate the heart of those who've come to receive and those who are watching online. It is in your holy name, Jesus, Yeshua, your Hebrew name. Let the church say amen. You know how we do it. Raise your Bibles. I have my Bible right here in my smartphone. And you know how we do it. Repeat after me. This word, this word. is Jesus. Jesus. This word, I believe it. I receive it in his holy name. Amen. You all may be seated. And it's so good to have everybody here on this Sabbath Saturday and looking forward to seeing you tomorrow if you can't make it today. Uh, but I, I'm just thankful to be here. You guys know that I had to deal with death in the family. And uh, I tell you what, it's nothing like being anchored in the word of God to help you uh, deal with death. And death really is transition transition and and so I just want to share with you just my personal testimony about the experience I had this this week with my aunt who was in a nursing home her name was Helen McCaskill she's 72 years old she she transitioned on Wednesday morning uh, at uh, 1 15 a.m. and I had the opportunity to to be by her side and uh, to make a long story short I was asleep uh, in the room fell asleep around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and something tugged at my sleeve, woke me up out of my chair. Nobody was in the room but me and my aunt. And as I looked over to my aunt, she was gasping for air. She was coming to the end. And the Lord knew that it was important for me to experience that, to be able to see this, because I wasn't able to be there for my grandmother who found herself in that nursing home and also in that same condition because I had not been delivered 11 years ago from the loss of my mother back at the age of 12. So I tried to get far away from anything that would really make me remember that pain. But boy, how God redeems you, how the Holy Spirit redeems you, being called to the ministry 11 years ago and how the Lord gets a hold of you and be able, he's able to deliver you from those things that you thought you couldn't deal with had me deal with my mother and I was able to deal with that. But here we are now fast forward to Wednesday and here I am and I had said, I said, and Helen, I'm not, I'm not gonna leave you. I'm gonna be right by your side. I'm there by her side. I wake up and as she's getting ready to, to render her last breath, I read Psalm 23 to her. I had already anointed her head with oil. It was a beautiful experience. If you understand life, in the transition process. And as I read Psalm 23, she gave her last breath. It was like a, and I said, wow, wow. Because only God determines when we're done. And just being there in that moment to experience the release, the soul being released. She had dealt with health issues all of her life for the most part. And to see her being set free from that frail body, it was a wonderful experience for me. And it gave me a revelation about the breath of life. And that's the subject of today's message, the breath of life. I want you to turn with me to Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis, the second chapter, verses 4 through 7. Genesis, the second chapter, verses 4 through 7. 
But we know God gives us life and God can take life. God is the only one that determines when we come into this earth and when we leave. He said in his word that we, he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, which gives us some indication that God knew us before we manifested in the earth. But what I love about Genesis 2, verses 4 through 7, at, at the beginning of time when God created the heavens and the earth and so forth, he gives us a snapshot of what's taking place in this particular passage of scripture. And it is written in Genesis 2, verse 4 through 7. I'm reading from the NIV version. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Bible gives us clear distinction that when God breathed life into man, man became a living soul. Without God breathing on that mound of flesh, man is a dead soul. But guess what? God breathed life. And what I love about how the Bible makes it clear in this passage of Scripture is that he shows us that he's giving us something. That breath, that word. He created the heavens and earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Six days he created with a word. It was just a word, just a breath. Every time God spoke to create something, it happened. There was life. It wasn't destruction. It was life. Things growing, things building upon one another. When he spoke a word and said, let there be fish in the sea, the fish appeared. When he said, let there be light, light appeared. The words that come from the Father's voice out of his mouth into the earth, it's always about life. It's always about life. So when he breathed life into the very nostrils of Adam, Adam had life. Adam had life. He was a living soul. What I love about the distinction that the Bible makes is it's clear that, he, that God wants us to understand what it is to live. Live. He gives us life. Now what are we going to do with the breath that he's infused into us? Are we going to speak life over people or are we going to speak death and destruction? Brothers and sisters, I love this passage of scripture because as I thought about my aunt who was in the nursing home in that bed at her end, she had lived her life. She had a simple life. Uh, contentment and godliness is great gain. She wasn't a stumbling block to anyone. I love that about her. Uh, and she, she just lived her life. And when I think about her last breath, Obviously, 72 years ago, July 3rd, 1948, when she was born, God breathed life into her. And here we are at the end, March 28th, 2021, she released her last breath, which means that God said, come home. The question for each one of us, when we are at the place of our last breath, what have we done between the time we were born and the time we transitioned. This is something we have to ask ourselves because as we look at the word of God in Genesis 2, and if you go back before Genesis 2 and you see how God is creating things, he's building up. If we are like our father and Jesus is in us, then the words that come out of our mouth, the actions, the things that we do should always be about edification, should always be about encouraging people, should always be about at times some correction because correction is about growth. Brothers and sisters, I love this passage of scripture as I, as I, I look through the Bible and I see um, how God gave us a gift. Many of us are looking for gifts. God, I need you to pay the rent, mortgage, Lord, I need you to help me make payroll for my employees, for those of you who are business owners. 
Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need you to do that. We look to God as if he's a genie, but the question we must ask ourselves, what are we doing for him? Modeling the first six days that it took God to create heavens, the earth, and create man was all about creativity, imagination, ingenuity. It was always about a, a, a broad purpose. And the beautiful thing about that passage of scripture in Genesis 2, if you notice that there was not any dew or any water in the land yet until he placed man in position, man not being gender specific, mankind. He placed mankind in a position to tend to what he's created. If you notice in the scripture, it says that he, he didn't, that the shrubs hadn't come up until there was water that came from the surface and then a man was formed. But the work wasn't done yet. He, he then breathed life into the nostrils. So the key for mankind, the key for each one of us is, are we purpose driven? And it's not about our own purpose, it's about the kingdom purpose. Matthew 28 verses 16 through 19, 19 being specific, is we are supposed to go out and share the gospel teaching them, baptizing all nations in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are called to the Great Commission. But some people, honestly, are called to tear some stuff down. That's what we see in society. The words, the actions that are coming out of people's mouth. Even in the church, the church we start here first because judgment comes to the house of God first. Are we breathing life into situations like God breathed life into us? Or are we breathing destruction into situations? Are we accusatory? Are we assassinating people's character because we're offended by something they might have done that we didn't agree with? But guess what? They didn't violate the word of God. Are we, are we always trying to tear somebody down because maybe I have a brokenness inside of me? Maybe I'm jealous. Maybe I'm jealous of you because you know how to play the keys and I really wanted to play the keys, but because I can't play the keys, I'm a little envious of what you, you can do. So now how I look at you is from a position of envy and now everything I say about you is something to tear you down. I look for the spots on your shirt. I look for all kinds of other things to highlight and magnify and justify why I feel the way I feel about you. Brothers and sisters, he breathed life into us. He breathed life. So as we move forward in these days, it is important for us to also replicate what the Father did for us. He breathed life. He gave us an opportunity. And even when we went astray, he sent his only begotten son, John 3, 16. He sent his only begotten son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. He came into the likeness of sinful flesh, yet he did not sin. The word of God says he didn't know sin. So guess what? When Jesus came into the earth the last time, he saw need. He said, I have come for those who are sick, who need a physician. So Jesus being love sees need. He doesn't see the sin on the person because what he sees is sickness. Sin is sickness. And when you understand that and operate from a position of love, then you'll operate as Christ operated in the church. I love Jesus. I loved it because he showed us. He was about teaching. He was about encouraging. He was also about correction because if you like correction, then you like to grow. He came to model something. He modeled the Father. Wherever Jesus spoke, whoever he spoke to, it was about raising them from the dead. So when I think about he breathed life into Adam, into the nostrils, and Adam became a living soul. What happens when we choose not to continue to receive the breath of life in our lives, when we turn away from the word of God, when we don't study the word of God for ourselves to show ourselves approved, when we, we don't really uh, want to worship him in spirit and in truth, when we're distracted by everything else around us and we choose to run after things of this world instead of chasing after the Father. 
See, a lot of folks don't even know the importance of Matthew 6.33. I had a preacher tell me, man, write it down so people can read it because they're not going to go and look for it themselves. I said, man, that's the state of humanity. They're not going to open a word, so they're depending on pastors and preachers to give them the word. But you got to be careful because not everybody's giving you the word. That's why God said, I'm placing the word in your hands. They have a personal relationship so you can know the word for yourself. Matthew 6.33, remember this. Matthew 6.33 Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. When I think about that passage of scripture being added unto you, it's building up. It's not tearing down. Everything the word does builds up, but it builds it on the right foundation. So what happens when a believer doesn't want to go and study the word? What happens when a believer who got the breath of life on the front end, even though we're all born into sin, he gives us an opportunity for redemption when we choose not to be redeemed, when we choose not to repent of our sins and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead three days later with all power. When we choose not to believe that, what happens to the person? The person becomes a dead soul. How many of y'all used to watch, um, what is it, Walking Dead? I used to always tell people this, you know, when I used to watch it, I say, you know, that is really a description in the physical of what's happening in the spirit. People are walking dead, but see, they don't really look like what you think of. they got them made up on TV. That's just to kind of intrigue you. But if you go into the spirit with your spirit eye, that's exactly how they look because how they're operating in the natural comes from that brokenness, that deadness that you see on screen. Oh, so what happens? How does a person act out when they're a dead soul? They're walking dead. Well, again, Proverbs 6, verse, uh, verses 16 through 19. If you go with me there, Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19. It is written, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue. Ooh, that's huge. Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Let me give you some revelation on that, stirring up conflict in the community. How many of you stir up conflict in your families through gossip? How many of you may not like a family member because you don't agree with a decision that they might have made and all you want to do is talk about it, stirring up. That's stirring up, stirring up, stirring up chaos and confusion. You see, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful that we are not tearing down. You see, I always tell people this, and as a pastor, I am not above correction, but bring me the word, don't bring me your opinion. Bring me the word. And when you bring me the word, you better do what the word says. In Matthew 18, it tells you, us how to go. Come to me in private. Don't try to get before a bunch of folks to try to call me out because guess what? I'm gonna sit you down. Let's, let's do it according to the word. But, but don't give me your opinion on how you feel and what you think should be. Bring me the word and if the word shows where I am in error, I will take the correction. That's how we should all be, brothers and sisters, because we wouldn't get the sort of spiritual growth if we weren't willing to be corrected. Jesus came into the earth to show us what it is to operate in perfection. So now we have something to look at and look where we are. Now, guess what? None of us are perfect, but guess what? When we receive the blood of the lamb and he covers us by our faith, we're made righteous. So again, when someone tries to tell you that you think you're self-righteous because you're walking in righteousness and you're holding to what the word says, you tell them, no, I'm not self-righteous. I'm made righteous by my faith. My faith is what justifies me. And if they want to know what that is, tell them to go to the book of Romans and read all the way through. They'll find it. Brothers and sisters, people who are walking dead will tear you down. They will tear you down. God's giving you some revelation right now because as we looked at the word of God in Genesis 2, we began to see that, that everything God spoke, it was to build, not tear down. 
Now, when you go through the Word of God and you begin to see the storylines unfold in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, because you can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament, you begin to see how God deals with rebellious people. He'll destroy, but he gives folks so much time to redeem themselves. Repent, repent, repent. And then Jesus, as he really talks to John at Patmos in the book of Revelation, and he, he shares some things with John, and also John begins to write and share with us about 666, which is the number of a man and the mark of a beast. And the revelation that we all got from that 666, the number of a man, is a pattern of disobedience. It's a pattern. Without God, man will continue to operate in disobedience. Disobedience leads to death. Disobedience leads to hell. Disobedience, but guess what? You have the opportunity to move out of the 666 into the number seven, which is completion. The number seven completion being that the Father has redeemed you. He's breathed his life into you, resurrected you from the dead. Now you're living, and now the pattern that you're going to be walking in is a completeness that the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Father, Yahweh gives you and you will begin to speak life into situations. You will begin to walk in boldness. You will love even when they hate you because they hate you now because you're relevant. Some of y'all are wondering why people don't like you because you're relevant. You're relevant. People spend time consumed with you because they see something in you that they don't have in them. And now what they've tried to do is to tear you down. But if you don't know who you are, you will run to them to be affirmed. But Jesus is the greater that's in me than he that is in the world. How many of you know that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you? I believe that. I believe that. And, and I, as I think about my own personal testimony, 11, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when my grandmother was about to die and I wasn't there by, at her bedside, scared to death because I couldn't deal with the fact that I hadn't mourned my mother back in 83. I was 12 years old then. So I built a wall cut off some stuff. I don't want to ever deal with that kind of pain because my mom and dad weren't together. I was in California and she died and I was 12. And how am I going to move forward? There was so much pain. I never got counseling, never got counseling. So I had to deal with the pain of losing the love of my life, who was my mom and move on, throw up this big old wall. I'll never have that kind of hurt again. So guess what I do? When I see people getting ready to leave, I get distant because I don't want to deal with that pain. But I'm so thankful that 10 years ago, the Father set me free from that, had me deal with that, had me grieve my mother, and in the grieving of my mother, he gave me understanding of why things must be the way they are. And it set me free and allowed me literally on March 28th at 1.15 a.m. to be by my aunt's side and to be redeemed in that situation. I wasn't there for your grandmother at the end, but I'm going to be there for my aunt. I might not be able to be there every day because I live six hours away, but I'm coming. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at the hospital. I'm going to be by your your side. Yes, yes, I'm there, redeemed and ready. That's what the Father does. He redeems you. He gives you the strength. It's his strength and our weakness. We got to surrender. So I got three points I want to leave you with today because I'm not trying to shout you out today. I just want you all to leave here today with an understanding that when you leave, the breath of life that's in you, you gotta keep going back for a fill up. You know, when I think about inhaling and exhaling, you gotta go for some more air. Make sure when you go for air, you're going for the word and not for the world. When you go for air, make sure you go into the word and make sure you get filled up with his breath. And what comes out of you is goodness and mercy. You know, I think about Proverbs, the book of Proverbs um, 1130. This is what it says. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. The winning of souls is about building and adding to the kingdom. We should all be kingdom. Everything we do should be about kingdom. So when someone gets on your last nerves, somebody tries to tick you off. I know there's some things we want to say to folks. 
I've been there. I know what it's like. But don't you corrupt your testimony. And sometimes you just have to be quick to listen and slow to speak. I would say not sometimes, all the time. And the word of God says, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. One thing I want you to leave with today, to love thy neighbor is to remain blameless. Don't be a stumbling block. It ain't all this other stuff people try to tell you. Oh, you got to let somebody keep coming back to your house to tear you down. No, I'll, I'll distance myself from those folks, but I won't do anything to tear them down. I won't do anything to give them a reason to continue staying in that state of rebellion. That's what love is. Brothers and sisters, so I got three points. I want you to tweet it. Point one, very simple. <laughs> Live for God. Live for God. Live for Yahweh. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Live for him. It's that simple. Everything we should do should be to live for him. And you're going to have people who don't like you because they first hated his son. You got to be okay with that. Point two. I wrote these down. Keep life in you. Keep life in you. Seek his word. Keep life in you. He breathed life into the nostrils, but we got to keep going back for the fill up. You got to keep going back. Don't think you got it one time. Now you don't ever have to open a word. and You're going to be depending on other people to give you life. And sometimes people are speaking death into you and you don't even know it because you hadn't studied the word to be able to discern what it is they're saying. Brothers and sisters in point three. Let others smell the breath that's in you. Share the gospel. Let others smell that breath. Now, if you've got some bad breath, you might want to put some mints in. You might want to keep some, some Listerine nearby before you talk to them. Let them smell the breath because when you have the breath of life inside of you, it is a sweet aroma. And everything that comes out of you it's a sweet aroma. You're, you're going to be an encourager. You're going to always try to help people where they are. You're not going to speak a negative word that'll probably try to take them somewhere else. And sometimes you'll just be quiet. Sometimes God is quiet. He doesn't speak sometimes to us because he says, I've spoken enough. Let me see if you can walk in what I've taught you. Sometimes we just need to learn how to zip it up and let God deal with whatever we may not agree with. Brothers and sisters, on this day, that's all he asks. Live for him. Seek him with everything you have. And let people smell your breath. The breath that should be in you is the same breath that he breathed into the nostrils of Adam and man became a living soul. Aren't you glad this morning that you're a living soul? Aren't you glad this morning that he raised us from the walking dead? That he redeemed our souls? That he took on the wages of sin, which was for us? He went to the cross, hands pierced, nailed to the cross. And he even said on the cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. Some of y'all would have been saying, get them, God. Get them. Get them, God. But he said, forgive them. They don't know. They don't know they need a physician. But I've showed them they do. And whoever believes in what I've shown them and what I'm doing for them at this moment shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you're a person right now where your breath is bad, and I'm talking about foul. You know it is because all you've ever done is gossiped, lied, assassinated someone's character, and the Holy Spirit is reminding you of it at this moment. It's called the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's a good thing. That means the Holy Spirit is close. If you don't know where you would spend your eternity, if you were to die right now, this is the moment to get the blessed assurance through the insurance of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Repeat after me, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised from the dead three days later with all power and you sit at the right hand of the father. 
I invite you into my heart to change me from the inside out. It's in your holy name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you believe it in your heart with everything you have, then you are on the right path. Make sure you get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. For those of you online who are watching us from afar, make sure you find a good Bible-based ministry that's helping you grow. Stay rooted and grow and watch what happens in your life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this Sabbath Saturday, give God your best. Serve, feast, but make sure you get some rest. Stay focused on the kingdom and watch what God does. This is that moment of giving. For those of you online, you all know, and those of you here, some of you are already givers and you give ahead of time. Don't feel pressured to have to show me your giving. And I'm speaking to my sister Lashonda over there. Not Lashonda, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, gosh. My mind, Lashonda, Lashonda, Lashonda must be watching online. She knows what I'm talking about. My mind's just gone completely blank. Oh my God, I'm talking about you, you, you. I don't know what, what's happening, but anyway, you can text message, uh, text your contribution to 901-244-4688. I'll go real slow because I know it's not on the screen. 901, it'll be on there in playback. 244-4688. 901 2 Four 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 six eight eight. You can also cash app dollar sign B G I Fellowship dollar sign B G I Fellowship. Again, dollar sign B G I Fellowship. And if you're watching us through our portal on ByGodInspired.org, you can give there at ByGodInspired.org. For some of our traditional folks, you like to mail your stuff in, you can mail your contribution to P.O. Box 1042, South Haven, Mississippi, 38671. That's P.O. Box 1042, South Haven, Mississippi, 38671. I want to remind you that we have Wednesday Bible study here at BGI at 630. Of course, the last three weeks we've had to cancel because I've dealt with some death and and some other stuff in the family. Uh, and so we will be back here this Wednesday, God willing. Make sure you show up. And I want to remind those of you who weren't able to come in person today to Sabbath worship that we are having our Ignite Sunday worship tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. To God be the glory. Let us all stand as a, the praise and worship team just bless us. We're going to let them bless us and let her sing something if she wants to. Praise be to God. Uh, whatever God puts on your heart. But I just want you to be encouraged on this day. I want you to know that no weapons formed against you shall prosper. And I want you to leave here knowing that you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Repeat after me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. To God be the glory, I'll leave it to this team to finish out. We'll see you back here Sunday. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, gotta run over, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over, I gotta run over, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over,
Oh, oh, oh. 